Welcome back to Koivi. Sabo's dead. Press F to pay respects. No, don't. But no, no respect. N no respect? No, no. Oh, we don't live in a respectful world. Well, I mean, can't even really argue with you on that. And if there was respect, we'll just pretend there wasn't. Sp speaking of disrespect, uh, what was it? Uh, was it was it uh, Sir Palo, who used to be known as uh, uh, was it One Two Three Bandeos? He put up a video. It was actually a pretty. It was like a funny little like par you know like the uh, the story time animation videos. Uh, it was basically just a parody of those, and Aaron Hansen decided to be offended by it. Oh yeah. Um, where he's like, I used to get bullied, blah blah blah, when it was just a, a dumb little parody. The funny thing for me was, part of it he says like, you see how you don't see the people that do these animations in the comments here, and I'm like, but but I did see them, and they thought it was funny. And I just thought it was funny that Aaron poked his head out again, fe feigning, uh, offense, and I just find it hilarious whenever he pokes his head out and says something stupid. I mean, it's usually because it's like, well... Because people he know were so stupid and mad that he got away with it. What was funny was actually, what was it, like, one of his, was it, uh, Oni? Like, who's one of his friends basically told him to grow the fuck up. I mean, Which was surprising. Because I was like, oh, you came out of the woodwork, okay. I mean... The other animator who stopped making animations and went into, uh, ma making, uh, LP videos. Animation's hard, man. It, oh, it, oh, yeah, it is. I'm not gonna doubt. It's not even that. It's, I mean, it's not even that it's hard. It's just it's harder to get a uh, any sort of money off of it. Yeah, especially especially with YouTube, because uh, you get pretty much buried. Well, plus, like, not being funny, how much ad revenue do you act unless you like go fucking nuts and get like uh, your video goes viral, which. Yeah, you're calling even with, even with that even with that because it, it comes down to because uh, what, what happens is if you take longer to upload videos you get actively punished in the algorithm and it's yep. your uh, video, your uh, channel goes lower daily versus uh, other channels it's daily videos or nothing pretty much it's very that's why a lot of like the ones that do like weekly videos started doing patreons that you know just an extra source of income yeah. Especially considering how um, on how uh, YouTube constantly is changing itself, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, hell, if you you remember, like there was a time I could get ad revenue. Yes. <laughs> they give you an idea, of, like how uncertain it is, and what's hilarious about it, that thing though, is they so yeah, like channels like my size, which are pretty damn small, uh, lost it, but I do think at some point they're gonna go for the next tier up. Uh, in terms of uh, who they'll take away ad revenue from. Mm -hmm. But uh, I will give them credit, they were smart about doing it, because uh, usually when they do other things, uh, people kind of uni uh, universally get pissed off about it, because they only targeted one smaller group. Uh, the channel, A lot of the channels with bigger... Uh, not all the channels, but a number of the channels with bigger followings kind of were like... Basically, basically the equivalent of just being like, oh no, it's fine, sort of thing. It doesn't affect us, it's not a problem. Oh no, you can do it. You can do it just fine. It's fine. Don't you worry just about gotta it. do what we do, which is use our big brains to get all this YouTube money and not like just get really kind of incredibly lucky. Yeah, you, you, a lot of it. It's all luck, and uh, yeah, there I mean, there is working the algorithm. Like Matt Pat knows the algorithm. I'm I actually believe that he's like has his brain attached to the algorithm, and that's why he can exploit it so much. No, that's not. No, he oh, actually not... he did actually he did finally get fucked. That's not um, fair. He doesn't have a brain to attach to the algorithm. But, uh, no, no, he he knows the algorithm pretty damn well. That's the one thing he knows. But, uh, what's funny, though, is... So one thing he used to do to, fu to uh, keep his videos up on the algorithm was he would change his thumbnails, because apparently that worked. And, uh, now he's no longer to keep cha He's no longer allowed to keep changing his, his uh, thumbnails. YouTube actually cracked down on it recently. Oh, uh, shh. I guess it's it really sense. weird. I guess it makes sense why like it would work though, because it tricks people to think it's like a new video. Yeah, I mean he's done like three videos on the Zelda timeline. Yeah, I didn't see he had a new one out. I didn't. What was really fun? Oh yeah, obviously I don't watch him either. But what's funny about it is there's a part of it where uh, he took a uh, where he was trying to say like Hyrule Warriors is the key that should be canon, 
Um, what's funny about it is there was a parody video that came out last year that was like a joke where they just, where he says something literally the exact same as this guy, but he leaves out the part where he starts going like completely pa like pants on head as because like, you know just to make it obvious like hey guys this is a joke I'm not actually saying this is what you should do, but um, Matt just took the, that that part and then just took it wholesale. What they should do really is to put aside all the problems. They should like they pretend that like Legend of Zelda is this like sort of video game franchise or something, and it's like every entry is like largely is more or less disconnected from the other unless stated otherwise i mean that's what it was but that would um, be i don't know that would be kind of a crazy thing to do like to have a game series that's like just tied together by a name and a few sort of recurring ideas you know nobody does nobody ever does nobody's that. ever done that and i don't know why because it'd be a really easy way to like build a franchise and maintain like you know uh, and maintain like the ability to just do whatever the fuck you want but no, I can't think if of I'm, any company I, I, or industry or franchise that has ever done anything even remotely close to that. I can't even think of multiple. Like, ugh. I can't think of a single one. Like, I'm stretching over here, I'm thinking, oh, Final Fantasy? No, they're all internet. There's the complicated Final Fantasy timeline that, that tells you that Final Fantasy VII is actually a prequel to Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. And but, then, uh, and don't forget, World of Far Fantasy is the thing that binds them all together, because it reveals that, uh, as was long suspected by game theorists, that Cloud is in fact Chibi. I knew and it. Ha always has been. You was just your perceptions were warped by sin and the sin, I knew and the he, sin I, toxins. I always knew he was someone obsessed with Earthbound. I mean, it could be. I mean, it could be. <laughs> That's a joke, honey. You and I get. Yeah. And it's to someone who. We've, I'm pretty sure no one of us have had a peep out of for uh, decades. Yeah, it's been a long time. But beyond any, but beyond like sort of references to people that we don't even know anymore, uh, there's also Grandpa and Daughter. They've, they've been doing it for years. They've been doing that the whole disconnected thing. You know, big major. Uh, well, I think Western they developer. do. They do. They, they do reference and are, are like in it, but they don't really affect each other because like different like crime shit. Well, it depends on the game. So like, it, one, one, two, and the London expansion are like all their own separate thing that have nothing to each other. Three Vice City and San Andreas are all like sequentially this. They're all like sequels and can interconnect, interconnect and then like characters from them will pop in and now 4 and 5 have the same thing but 4 and 5 are definitely separate from the other trilogy but it's that case right. where it's like they'll have like you know they'll you know have like those uh there's a level of interconnectedness but they are also largely separate from older entries i mean it's not like zelda hasn't done direct sequels to their games before no, they 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 they've uh, done I uh, was it like like uh, Majora is a direct sequel. And the only uh, reason this is Zelda ever... 1 and 2 are uh, Zelda 1 and 2 are direct sequels. Well, the only reason this is a fucking problem is because someone at Nintendo thought, "Hey, let's produce a timeline and let's just try and pretend that all these games are interconnected and have uh, and have all and are all brought together by wibbly wobbly wobbly, wobbly timey wimey bullshit." See what you made me do. Made me reference a show I hate. I'm sorry. You should be. But uh, it was just still funny that he's a he's done like three of those videos. Like someone was joking, like, "Man, I hate it when there's nothing on TV but reruns." I mean, we also I have wondered like, where is the crux point where it's like we've we've made fun of all those shit of the shitty nostalgic movies and. There's no more, like, bad games to discover. I mean, that's pretty much why, uh, what's-his-face, who, uh, who, who is basically dead now, uh, the critic, why he just, like, moved on to just getting rid of the whole, like, time, like, he had, like, a whole thing where it's like, oh, I can only do movies within this amount of time of each other. Mm. It's like, well, oh, they're all gone now. Like, he was, like, he was just like, I'm running out of shit. Also, my company's about to explode. Oh god, oh god! Well, no, that was before his company exploded. I mean, you could argue that was when the first explosion happened. Uh, when was the first explosion? Well, it would be like when suddenly everyone, when a whole slew of, like, main people started leaving. 
Well, well yeah, that's still the the, the first one. Uh, that's still that's still the one. It, there hasn't been another one. No, there was no because remember, so it wasn't just like remember because there was the whole thing with Spoonie getting fired. Was Spoonie getting fired, and then there was like oh all, yeah, all yeah, the yeah, other but, people like there was a but slew of people. But didn't Sp but didn't Spoonie wasn't Spoonie the only one that left that? No, no, no. Like right. other people like uh, what's her name? Looper had left beforehand. So like, there okay. were a bunch of people who had been leaving and also were pissed off because of that fourth movie or whatever it was. The one where they ah. like killed the kid nerd and didn't tell anyone, and then they were like, "Man, internet reviewing days are over." And everyone else is there like. The fuck? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I remember that now. It's, it's, it's hard for me to keep, I, I like, stop keeping track of their stuff, and I just forgot about stuff of theirs. It's okay. Not no. even trying to be funny. No one will blame you for forgetting spooning. The only thing I remember of his was his, like, when he did, like, a se the series of, like, Ultima videos. It's like the only thing I remember of his, and also the whole Final Fantasy thing that got him popular. Yeah, made fun of eight. Big, big fucking deal. But, and then he, and then he kind of, uh, I guess he was like the first sort of widespread case of uh, internet insanity. Yeah, he was like one of the first ones I know. There are probably other ones that are smaller, but he oh, was definitely yeah, like a more I, that's popular why I said, one. Like, uh, widespread. Because like, I mean, was... we, we we know other people that have gone fucking off the deep end and disappeared. I mean... But nobody knows who they are. Only we know who the fuck they are. And his name is Medi. But M Medi's still around. No, he isn't. He died. No, he didn't. He, he's in my Castlevania videos. Oh, I finished Bloodstain, by the way. Oh, nice. I like it. Yeah, Bloodstain was pretty good. Um, waiting for the Zangetsu DLC, but... Yeah. Beyond that, I think... Oh, damn, I don't have the fish, so I can't do that shit. Oh god, sorry. Beyond that, I think I've... I think it's that kind of game where it's like, I have to go back to it at some point, because I don't super feel... It's not like when I was playing RE2 and I like, had this insatiable desire, yeah, i got to play through it again on the, harder diffi on the hardest difficulty. Harder than hard. I'm, ver I'm very rare with that with uh, video games. There's a couple that I've been like that with, but... Usually they're like quicker games, like like shorter, like more arcadey games. Like I did that with the the bleed games. I mean, I'm uh, which are like pretty sure there guns. must be some way to get like Bloodstain done in like sub two hours or something. I think uh, I think it's like a half hour is the world record right now. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, I think that's I think that's what I heard. I'm guessing that's the bad end. Uh, I don't know. Could be. Well, that's just that's where all you need is the. Uh, you just need to kill him. Well, you just need the light dash move because everything else it's like you can get pretty. Yeah, you just need to be able to get to where he is. If I, I don't know if that's with just him. I, I have no earthly idea. Oh, well, then again, there's probably like skips that I'm not aware of because there's always skips. Yeah, I don't really know speed run stuff. That's not really what I'm. I'm not good at that. But hey, on the bright side, um... I mean, hell, the game I'm playing right now, I'm pretty sure the speed the speed run record for is probably less than, like, the first video I put out of this. Yeah, probably. But hey, on the bright side, I'm pretty sure Matt Wolf Chaos comes out in, like, a couple days from recording this. It should be out by the time uh, this goes live. Probably? Uh, when does it come out again? I thought it was, like, beginning of August. Which today is the beginning of August. Oh, okay, so, yeah, you're, you're right, probably. But, uh, oh. I am looking forward to, uh, to that. There's also a, um, there, it was an indie Metroidvania game, uh, called Momodora. They have a spiritual successor that's coming out also in August. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. August I'm looking Oh, shit. So I'm also looking forward to, uh, which Majig? Oh, yeah, River City Girls. <clears throat> yeah, that seems like it'll be fun. Uh, I'm... I don't think there's anything else, like, sort of big I'm looking forward to this year. Yeah, ev pretty much after River City Girls, I'm done this year. That's really it. Oh, I guess, uh, I guess we can talk about the new Smash. Did you watch the Smash uh, character thing? Uh, I, I did. The only thing I want to say real quick, though, before that is, uh, I am recording Fire Emblem, but, um, I'm playing further on my own because I'm playing a different, uh, path, but game's really good. Yeah. I'm really liking it. I'll be sure to not check it out because I don't care for Fire Emblem. Yeah, I didn't really think so. It's just more for the video. It's also like I've been trying. I'm trying to get through the uh, 
through Trails in the Sky, so... Yeah. I still need to beat that, honestly. That game's really good, too. I'm at the, uh... I can't remember what the third city's called. Uh, it's the one after the port town. With the bridge. Ah, okay, I know where you are. I'm there. I'm just uh, and I'm doing, like, librarian shit. But, man, that, uh... That boss fight with the dogs was fucking oh. hard at first. Yeah, fuck the... You know what's worse is I'm actually playing on hard because I was like, I'm good at JRPGs. And it's... That like, game... Oh, those dogs just fucking... one-shot me. Oh. But... That game is hard. Yeah, well, I'm managing all right. It's just a matter of uh, getting off. And I guess the one thing I've noticed that's a bit odd is it actually has like a almost fixed level cap. Or a soft level cap, I should say. Where you can only get like so many levels. Yeah, because what happens is once you get to like the level that the game wants you to be at, it makes it so every and like more or less every enemy only gives one experience point until you progress. Yeah. Which, you know, I can understand because it's like you don't want people to just turbo level. But at the same time, it's like you're technically removing an option, especially against some of the boss fights where it's like, I guess that's the other thing is none of the, the boss fights aren't necessarily puzzles. Like, you know how um, some ja some like big JRPGs have bosses where they have, like, gimmicks to them and they... It yeah. comes... It, I know later on there's more puzzle ones. Um, but yeah, a lot of times with those, it's like, basically try to either take something down or throw as many status effects on it as possible and take, like, uh, one of the... some of the ads down real quick. Yeah. Is pretty much like how a lot of those boss fights work. And... Is you just want to reduce the ads and throw as much AoE in as you can. And try to avoid getting hit by AoE as much as you can. And the problem with the dogs was they're both incredibly strong. And also if you took one out, it, it's one of those bosses where it's like, well, if you fo if you take one out, it empowers the other they one. They get stronger, yeah. But the problem with that in a JRPG, like, in an action game, okay, you can, that's, that's annoying because then you're like, oh, but I just like halved your damage output and I actually quintupled it. That's annoying. But like, you can adapt. In the JRPG, it's like... Well, everything sort of it's sort of fixed, and there's like obviously you can I know in trails uh, you can like you can abuse like certain uh, crafts in order to like abuse the term timer, but it still like limits it's still sort of limited in your ability to respond to certain to uh, certain enemies and their attacks. Versus like say Devil May Cry, which, Devil May Cry Three, which had the Agni Rudra boss fight. Which had a similar sort of gimmick of kill one and the other gets stronger. Rah, rah, rah. Whereas the second you get actually good at fighting, and it's like, whatever, get stronger, give me a challenge. Or I guess to be more, to be more like hip with the kids, uh, Ornstein and Smau and Dark Souls. No, you don't need to be hip for them. Dark Souls isn't really even that, that great. Dark Souls, <laughs> Dark Souls isn't even really a fighting game. <laughs> oh, is this where we're gonna get to the Smash part now? Mm, oh yeah. Speaking of things that aren't really fighting games, I'm guessing you watch the uh, hero reveal thing. Oh yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, I see every. I saw his stuff. Um, he looks funny, honestly. I, I'm more impressed that for that of all the things where it's like, oh, and this guy's voiced by Nobuyuki Hiyama. It's like the very first thing they say after that is, yeah, he was in Gal Gaiga. Oh yeah, it's right. Like... I, I said it. I knew as soon as as soon as they said that, I knew you were gonna fucking bring that up. Well, I was just I more it. impressed that like that took precedent over the fact of, oh, and also I guess he voiced Link. It is pretty funny. Like, I feel like. Well, at least we know where Sakurai is. Where Sakurai's uh, taste lie. I mean, it's not like he, he didn't shove a bunch of like, like why the fuck is this Zelda character in this game? It's just clones of Link. So I guess you know. I guess it makes sense. I mean, I guess it's cute that there are characters who aren't the hero voiced by W. Kiyama. But I'll never touch him willingly. <laughs> I I just like that uh that that people were uh, the Smash community was pissed off because it was a character they didn't know, well at least in the West. Oh, which dragon? Oh, what Dragon Quest? The voice by Nobuyuki Kiyama guy? No, no, the, the hero. They they're they, uh, because people in the West don't really know Dragon Quest that well. A lot of the uh, with people in like the Smash community being shitlords when they when they first announced when we're bitching about him being in the game. No, I mean they didn't bitch when Marvel was in melee. Well, they didn't really know what he was, but then it got popular and there's a bunch of them, so they get pissed about the Fire Emblem characters as well. 
I mean, there are too many Fire Emblem characters. But... I mean, there's too many. I mean, there's too many Pokemon and Mario characters if we're gonna go down that route. There are. You only need one Pokemon character, and that's Greninja. Eh. Ninja is best. Eh. Yes. Eh. But you know why he's the best? Eh. Because he's the Frokage. Eh. You just don't believe in his Nindo, his Nindo, his ninja way. Eh. Unlike a certain other ninja, Greninja works really hard. I mean, that's not hard. You just have to not be Naruto. I was, I mean, I was trying to avoid name dropping him, but yeah. Oh no, he he needs it. He needs to be told. Well, that could be worse. He's worthless. Could be Boruto. Ugh. 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 Part is Boruto sounds like. Fucking sort of joke name, some shitty niche, some shitty like meme video would do. I'm the I'm my, my original character, Boruto. Oh god, it really does work. Yeah, it's like it'd be it'd be tragic if it wasn't so. It'd be funny if it wasn't so tragic. Oh, what the hell? I laugh anyway. You know what's funny? Uh, was it last uh, last week? I did finish watching the entirety of it, and I did watch the movie. Uh, censored or uncensored? Uncensored. That's the only version I own. Uh, so you don't get to see that guy not die, he just got laughing gassed. Or instead of getting shot, Joker just <laughs> gets pushed and accidentally lands in a bunch of electrical wires that electrocute him. I, I saw- I've only ever seen that version once when I was a kid, because I watched it on TV. I had that- So that's the only time I've ever seen that version. I had it on VHS and that was the only version we had. Yeah, so, uh, but I know what you're talking about the guy, like the the, the the stupid big guy who uh he who in the uh, the uncensored version he just shoots him. Yeah. Oh, well, he does the whole bang flag, and it's like, haha. Oh, I was just I was kidding. Ki no, I wasn't. That, that's, oh, no, no, oops, I wasn't. That's his secret. He's always kidding. You know what's funny? Even in the uh, the DCAU, that's the only time Joker really felt menacing to me. Because it's also the only time he was actually allowed to have consequences to his actions, right? It's like every other t yep. every other time, it's like, oh no, yeah, these people are in mortal danger, but they're not like actually dead. Yeah, well, yeah, he's his first like actual on-screen kill, isn't it? Uh, I think there were people he killed in the other ones. It's just um, he was more clown. Where this one, uh, he was definitely more murder. But yeah. It's a pretty good movie, all things considered. Yeah, it's probably one of my favorites, honestly. I, I would... Like, in, for, like, superhero movies. So, this would be a point where I regain you with the talk of how I... Oh, yeah, and in my rewatch of BTAS. But I kind of stopped that because I can't watch that on the... I can't watch that while I'm playing another game. While I'm playing the game, so instead I've started rewatching Star Trek: The Next Generation. So I was like, man, I need something that I don't have to pay any attention to and can tune back into and not miss anything. Ah, TNG. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, what's going on with Lieutenant Commander Data in this episode? Oh, he's trying to be human again. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, oh, he's still not learned anything. Okay. Wait, wasn't that last episode? Oh wait, no, that was a season ago. Oh, these all just sort of blend together after a while. They really do. Problem is, I'm still on like seasons. I'm only on season two now, and season two is it's one of the three bad seasons. Where it's like, it's, it's, well, well, one... it's hard for me to comment because I haven't seen uh, that series since I was like really young. It's. Uh, I'll let you know how much it holds up when I get to the good stuff because one and two are pretty abysmal most of the time. I haven't really, to be honest with you, I've never really had. I haven't really had any desire to go and watch Star Trek. You should at least watch Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine is fantastic. Deep Space. As I'm constantly being told. Deep Space Nine is basically that show, which was like actually had had it over to writers, who had like an idea and. A story and characters, as opposed to an uh, ideal and a pre and a preachy message. Star Trek pre preachy? Never. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like a nice idea, but 
of the whole, oh, it's all this just unity, can we all get together? But it's so, like, child, it's so childish in its attitude towards, like, moral quandaries and shit. Where it's like, oh, well, uh, I mean, yeah, we live, like, they live in a world where they don't have to, like, the money is irrelevant because, hey, everything's irrelevant because you can just create whatever the fuck you want out of thin air. And it's like, well, yeah, of course, you're living in a perfect world. You don't have shit like resources and right. squabbles over land because you've got infinite planets out there, essentially. You have, they have infinite everything. It's like when, so it's like, yeah, it's in this sort of idealized world where you have everything you want for nothing, sure. But hey, guess what? Everyone sort of lives in a world where we don't have everything and we do want for things. And so whenever the Federation's all, yeah, well, you need to stop being so barbaric like we were in the 20th century. It's like, well, maybe we were barbaric because we have very good reasons to be. I'm not saying war's good and genocide's pretty uncool. Hardline stance, I know, but like... Oh, you're taking a controversial stance there, buddy! I know, I could be the next JonTron in the things I say. <laughs> Well, at least, well, as long as you're not the next pro Jared, you'll be fine. Because then, you know, people will still hang around you, and we'll let you, and we'll uh, cameo in your videos. Yeah, well. <laughs> Just don't be pro Jared. And you'll be fine. That's all you gotta do. It's okay. Just don't. Real secrets. Just don't. Hang, don't have a wife or don't have a girlfriend. Or yeah, yeah, don't husband have or boyfriend. Because if you don't, then you can't cheat on him. Exactly. Exa See, you're getting it. Problem solved. You're getting it. I've just solved <laughs> adultery. You did it. You solved it. Hooray. When are you going to write your book on it? Um, okay. I've written the book. It's just two words. It just says uh, two words. Don't marry. Oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Go. Go on, Lord Frieza. Good one. Well, like, fuck. So I guess oh, to, fuck! I guess to like be a bit more specific, Star Trek always has the like the bad Star Trek. Well, the Star Trek shows that are aren't Deep Space Nine always have this problem where multiple characters overlap, right? And this generally comes in the form of like the special characters. And by the special, I mean like your Data or your Seven of Nine, the ones who are like they are separate from the rest of the crew and they have abilities that make them better. So like, hey, you remember Jordy? No. Played by uh, the Barberton. No. The blind guy. I don't remember the. I don't. I don't really remember the character yeah. to be honest. Yes, the you. visor thing. That's the. That, there you go. I remember that. All right. So he's meant to be chief engineer guy. So he does all that shit. Problem is because you have. Well, you've probably heard of Wesley. Shut up, Wesley. Yeah, because they have Wesley and Data, who are both like uber mega science geeks who know everything and can solve anything. It means that every sort of like. Everything with Jordy is like he doesn't have anything to do because, well, why go to why go to the blind guy when you can go to the, when you can go to everybody else when you, when you go to the other two that are better than him? Yeah. Thankfully, Wesley leaves. It's ki it's kind of like it's kind of like the the wharf thing, where it's like, but he always gets his ass kicked. Yeah, but then the trade off is Wharf gets all the best episode, all the best focus episodes. True. Because every all, all of his episodes are basically Perfect. like. Hey, look. Remember when his back got? Remember when his back got broken by a by a cardboard box? Yeah, and then it's just, then the entire plot is, man, I want to kill myself. I don't want you to kill yourself, but I want to kill myself, and it's my right. Well, I don't care about your rights. You know what? If you ever want a good time, look up John. Look up like Jonathan Frakes, who plays uh, who plays um, Riker. Try and look up like any gifts of Riker smiling. And you'll be like, oh, I've seen those. And it's like. I love the guy. He's a great. He's a great man. Uh, I think you probably know him better for his rolling gargoyles. Yeah, but I, I do know him because he's one of the characters I do remember. And um, he's great because I always remember there's like a convention thing where he bread spinner. Well, people have to remind me that there was a time he didn't have the beard, and I'm like, what? Yeah, season one. Apparently, you ever, apparently the story for that is he turned up for like filming of like the second season. And he, oh yeah, he didn't shave, and then they uh, <laughs> just were like, keep that. He just assumed, well, they'll shave it off for me. Oh no, they won't. Oh shit, what have I done? 
And then, and then, they, and then, because they liked how he looked with that so much, they decided to retcon like Star Trek Lord, let him have it. Yeah, well, I do know that much, which is really funny. But yeah, he's like one of the characters I actually remember. But he, but he has a problem because his whole character is like, man, I want to be a starship captain. And then at the end of like season three, where he beats the Borg basically as the hero of the Federation, and he doesn't become like a captain because it's an episodic TV show, we can't change the status quo like that, because it would basically mean getting rid of him. So then for like the rest of the remaining like four seasons he's got fuck all to do. Because he already had his character development. Well yeah, because once you've sort of been saved the entire galaxy, or saved the entire like, federation, and you've got... There's not much else for you to do. Yeah. Like, Especially when your goal is, I want to become a captain. You save the Federation. Oh. But I turned down all my commissions. Because I want to keep serving under Picard. And it's like... It's just, that doesn't make any sense. nothing you can do. So then everything after that is just... It's almost as bad as then they also have a ship's counsellor. But... But train, you ask. What's the point of a ship's counsellor on a ship where everyone is perfect and nobody has arguments? Well... That's a, that's a conundrum TNG never solved. Because there's every single episode about the uh, ship's counselor is about her mother, or her getting raped, or eat turned evil. Oh good, um, that's a good combo. It's like, pick one, sometimes both. Uh, those are all great, I love it. I love it so much, I don't hate it at all. What are you talking about? But yeah, that is... I don't know. It, I like Star Trek, but like, it always it always has to come with like the provisions of I like it, but I don't like that or that or that or that or the entire show. Yeah, it depends on the show. I don't like Voyager. No one likes Voyager. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's usually what I hear is people go Voyager sucks. Well, Voyager has like an actual genocidal maniac in charge of the ship. Oh, that's fun. I'll uh, give you a hint. This is the it, captain by a woman who brilliant idea was, hey look, we met the Borg. I know, and then Borg are fighting this like race of aliens who are actually kicking their ass. I know, let's give the Borg super weapons. Wait, what? Because I'm sure the Borg will help us and not like, you know. Why would you why would you do that? It's a very good question, Dan. The Borg <laughs> what the, the been Borg would just for years. The Borg the Borg would be like, oh, okay, cool, and now we assimilate you. What? Yeah, but we did then get 7 of 9 out of the deal. It wasn't just a cheap cat, cheap grab for ratings. What are you talking about? I don't even remember 7 of 9. Uh, I mean, sad parts. That's actually kind of, well, probably better off. It's not like if I remember, I, I never saw the show, so. Well, there you go then. I mean, bizarrely enough, this all sort of stemmed from the fact that they're doing this Picard, like, revitalization that looks like shit. And she's one of the characters who's returning for some bizarre reason. Why would you bring her back? She she, she was the got, almost got people killed with no, her. No, 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 Janeway was the captain. Seven of Nine was the oh. uh, science. Was She was the special, the super special character on Voyager when they realized oh. their super special character who was an alien for Neonix who literally everyone hated, was hated by literally everyone. And also- Wasn't the captain also hated by everyone? Yeah, but it's not hard to get rid of her. Also- uh, I know a way. Gun, bullet, bang. Contract, man. Contracts. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Also, um, probably what- also, what really helped is, uh, let's just say Seven of Nine's actress is quite attract- was quite attractive. And uh, her, and she didn't walk around in regulation uniform, shall we say? Uh, skin type, hmm. skin type body suit with literally with cups molded to each of her breasts. A character being popular because they're hot—that never happens. I mean, I'm never. not saying it was exclusively why she was popular, but I, it was exclusively why she was popular. It was no, actually, no, actually, she did also have a lot of good, a lot of uh, episodes that you could consider good in the sh in in that show. In Voyager, it's like you basically take what you can get. Hello, I didn't hate this. <laughs> it's almost the same as liking something. But I was mostly wa I mostly watched it because a friend insisted we had to watch it to see how bad it was. 
And it's like, well, okay, but you'll pay for this. Did he pay for this? Yes. Or what did he pay with? I made him watch Transformers 1 to 4. Oh, was he one of the people when we watched uh, Extinction? Because I remember you, you, I watched that with you. Yes. God, that movie was so boring. I know, right? Like, I, I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I don't, I, I don't know if I mentioned it at the time, but I got, I was so bored with that movie that I started like browsing shit online, and just started like I didn't, ha I, I don't think I, I, I think I don't know if I had my smartphone at the time or not, but I know I just started like looking at other shit because I was bored. It's impressive, really, but it's okay. Transformers is dead. Until Cop on for now. Until we, until I remembered to uh, pip Cop on again. Why do you do this? Well, remember Cop on Why do you do? Because that? if we forget Cop on we're just doing a disservice. You, you mentioned it last video. <laughs> we never forget, Dan. Cop on I, I want to forget. No, you don't. Because I do. Because it's a great, I desperately great want to forget. To bring up in conversation for people who don't know. Uh, oh, hey, you like Transformers? Are you interested? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Ultimate Prime Megatron, all that shit. Hey, you ever heard of Cop on here? No, no. Funny thing to bring up in conversation is like, hey, fucking Optimus Prime's entire person fits on a floppy. I mean, we have. I mean, we clearly have, like, different interpretations of Which, by, which by, the, by the way, which my snarky ass would, would love to, like, when they, they did the whole death battle, they'd be like, yeah, but obviously his AI isn't really that advanced if you can fit him on a floppy disk, because a floppy disk only contains X amount of megabytes. I mean... No, not, not even megabytes, it was, like, it was like gigabytes? Kilobytes. Or was it bytes? It was... Kilobytes, okay. I mean, if it may, I mean, if you want things to be even... Sorry, just gonna hit Oh my god, what the hell? This kid's playing outside, I'll shut my window. Christ. Yeah, you think that kid was being murdered? No, it looked like she fell off her bike. Probably because, oh. probably because of the trip bar I set up earlier. Um. So anyway! Yeah, you know, hey, uh, no solicitors. So anyway, yeah, his AI fits on a, on a floppy, which is just a couple kilobytes, which is just really funny. I mean... He, he, this, I remember so obvious. So obviously, he he shouldn't be able to defeat pretty much anyone with a brain because clearly his intelligence is lower than that of any average person. Because that's really stupid. I mean, I, I don't know, Dan. Have you met the average person? I have. I work. Ge I work. And you're going to tell me their brains were hit on floppy disks. Hmm. It. Some yes. Majority no. Majority are stupid, but not quite as stupid. Don't forget, Optimus Prime killed himself because he killed something in a video game. I mean, I think what's more impressive is that one episode when Megatron was all, "Hey Prime, how about you, how about instead of how about you and I have like an honorable one v one duel to determine who wins this? Because all this killing is senseless." And Prime's like, "That seems reasonable, Megatron." And then when they have the honorable one v one duel, uh, Megatron just sort of inexplicably has all the powers of all of his Decepticons. Subordinates. And it's Are like, you telling me that yeah, he the cheated. Decepticon deceived him? He cheated. Are you saying that a Decepticon would deceive someone? But that's not why the, you say the Decepticons because they're deceptive or something. That's not why they're Decepticon. Oh, it's not. No. Why? Why? Why are they Decepticons? Shut up. But yeah. It was just funny, and it's like, well, I guess I lost the honorable 1v1 door. And it's like a little cripple boy. I'm like, hang on a second. Hang on a second. This is so. It, so you know what? Even though Optimus has the brute strength to defeat, uh, would have the brute strength to defeat the fucking Gundam, I don't think he has the intelligence to do it. <clears throat> Which Gundam? RX-78? Any of them. <laughs> Azaku might be able to take him out. He's that stupid. Depends on the Optimus as well. Well, we're go well they went with the 80s Optimus. Well, actually, no, they didn't even go with that. They just went with, like, an amalgamation of Optimus. Oh, well, I mean, Red and Armada Prime would probably win. Cause I think it was, like, a mix of, like, the old cartoon and one of the comics. Because that's what they kept citing were those. Oh, I didn't oh, if it's, like, Marvel Comics stuff, then maybe. I never bothered with Oh, no, I don't think it was Marvel. I think it was slightly newer. Oh, IDW. Mm. 
I think, because it looked newer, the, the art. But, like, I mean, it depends, as I said, it depends on the Prime, depends on the Gundam, but, like, Animu Prime could probably win because he's got Animu powers. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I mean, 80s Gundam has bullshit 80s powers, but, I, but I, I'm just arguing that okay. I think he's too stupid here's, to feed anybody. Here's the problem, right? Because most Gundam, like, most UC Gundams win because of new types, and, oh, I can sense yeah. them, but it's like, you can't read, but you won't be able to sense Prime because he's he, he's not a new type. He doesn't have, he is, he's not tormented by space ghosts telling him to kill everyone. <laughs> well, I could have been a mother figure to me, you know. Says the 25-year-old man about the dead 17-year-old girl. It's like, wait a minute, hang on a second, Shah. Shah, I think I think we need to take you to a therapist. We don't have those in Xeon. Oh. Nor do we have them in the Federation. Oh. <laughs> also, I'm guessing it means that. Man, I, I like how the, the, the future that's like a, a utopia has counselors, but the one that isn't doesn't have them. What the fuck? I think they need to give. I think Star Trek needs to give up their counselors. At least that counselor. She's basically. The problem is she's also psych. She's also not fully psychic, but empathic. So then she basically was just a captain. I sense that these people. I sense that these uh, Romulans are being duplicitous, and it's like, no fucking shit. They exist to be duplicitous. Romulans being duplicit? No. No! No! Fucking Romulans. No! No! They're not even like space Nazis, because that's, that's the Cardassians. It's true. The Cardassians are mostly cool because they're just. Well, they just have like two really good people who of their race in Deep Space Nine. One who's basically like a concentration camp commandant who insists that he uh, insists that he did his best to help the people he tortured and abused and killed. He was doing it for them. God damn it, he's hey, a hey. hero. And then the other guy who's Listen, it is better that I do do, do this. I am doing it for them, and they will they will like what I do for them. So that meant to be German. Yep. I don't I don't really have a good German, so you'll have to deal with it. There. <laughs> just but yeah uh but yeah transformers gundams oh actually i guess like i guess slightly relevant like yesterday there was a trailer for uh they really announced we're doing another build divers which is neat i guess i I watched the first Build Fighters and it was okay. It was good in the sense of like, yeah, it's Yu-Gi-Oh, but instead of card games, it's robots. Card games on robots, basically. And then they did Build Fighters Try. I mean, that's what I mean. That's what the new Zoids is basically gonna be. They ride them rather than like pilot them. They like ride on their backs. Mm. Oh fuck! So when do when do like the five Zoids combine together into the Nega Zoid? Maybe that's fusions. It's probably Zoid's fusions. It sounds like Zoid's fusions. Cause that that was the one that came out after they uh, did uh, Zero and uh, Chaotic Century. Well, I'll just have to continue and doing what I've been doing, which is avoid the Zoid. I do recommend uh, Chaotic Century. I, I think you might like it. Yeah, it's one of those things where I've got a lot of people who go, "Man, Zoid's was so good." And it's like because it wasn't on like any sort of cable channel that I had ac well, I, either I had access to as a kid, or it was on at like early in the morning when I wasn't awake, because I only I live relatively close to my school, so I didn't need to like get up out like hours beforehand. So like there are a lot of shows I just a lot of like sort of twenty like two mid two thousands uh, cartoons I just missed. Right. I never saw the finale of Chaotic Century because I got grounded when they aired it. And they never aired it again. Whoops. Everybody died. I'll tell you what happened. Everybody... <laughs> it's just that main character was like, Okay, everyone, I'm going to, re going to reveal the entire plot. <laughs> just in another voice, I must go, my planet needs me. And they just like slide his, uh, <laughs> they slide like a JPEG of him up. Yeah. <laughs> there goes the Liger! He's never coming back! Yay! 
the evil has been defeated. I don't even know what that image is from. Uh, you've seen that one, the evil has been defeated. Yeah, Sabo would know. Where... Sabo would, but he's he's dead. F, press F. No. Uh, even if you no, don't have to, the audience has to. Jeez. They have to press F. Because you're not going to, because you're a bitch. Uh... You don't respect what, Sabo. What was the thing? What, what was the uh, image again? I suddenly forgotten. Sorry. Uh, the uh, the evil has been defeated. Okay. I'm just gonna Google it. It's probably from some. Oh Sentai no, show. it's not. I know what it's from. Oh, was it from? It's from. Um, it's from. Um, how? Uh, Cabin in the Woods. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I know, I've never seen Cabin in the Woods, and I don't really want to, to be honest. Your best... Uh, I didn't like it, but I, I seem to be like massively in the minority on not liking it. it. It didn't really interest me, is what I'm saying. So that's why I don't really have any desire to see it. It just doesn't interest me. Like... As I said, I'm massively in the minority for disliking it. I accept that. Well, yeah, I know the movie. I know the movie. I know the movie's popular. I just don't have any interest in it. Like it just—it it feels odd to me because it's like it's once again—it's that sort of horror movie parody thing where it's like, oh, we get—we know all the tropes. We're going to make fun of them, but it's like I don't know. It's so, also so directly like. Leaning on Evil Dead and Evil Dead by entire set piece, and it's like Evil, Evil Dead doesn't necessarily like attribute itself to a lot of the things. It doesn't attribute itself to most of the tropes that it's like throwing up about. Uh, right. Ways. So it just comes off as like, yeah, we've seen the Evil Dead and we've seen other horror movies. And it's like. Don't you reckon? And I think I've even complained about this before. Is that there's this sort of general misconception people have about horror, where they have the, like, where they have the, quite frankly, incorrect belief horror is stagnant, and it's like, no, horror is not. Horror can't be because if it is, uh, you su if it is, like, it suddenly loses all effect. Oh, what do you mean by stagnant? Okay, so people talk about like horror tropes, horror cliches and tropes and whatever, and they're all, and, like all horror is the same, and it's like it's clearly not though. Because you have like, well, for instance, you have your sort of like your slasher movie style horror, where the horror. Oh yeah, no, there's different types of horror. Uh, okay, I see what you're saying. I didn't really quite understand at first. What I'm saying is, but it's like there's so many sort of subgenres and variations, and it's like every few years there's like a brand new thing that comes out that does like crazy silly things that other people. And it's like yeah, you'll get pe you get like things that will like revolutionize or change things enough, but they'll get. Followers on most, that's and most of the time too. It, it, you'll and most most movies will even like whether they're good or not will like not be like the revolutionary movie. It'll just be <laughs> a movie. If you want the true, if you want like the sort of film genre, whatever film genre that is like the most stagnant of all, uh, romantic comedies. Oh yeah, they've been stagnant forever. It literally you can you watch one, you've seen them all. Well, because they all go almost exactly the same. Which is same story beat. They all have that same story beat too, where the uh, the one where they uh, they act they, they misunderstand each other and they have that mopey bit before they ultimately get back together in the finale. Yeah. It's incredible, and it's usually like towards the end. It's usually on the third act where this happens. Versus like horror, where you've got things like, I mean, obviously the pen obviously people like try and argue stuff about horror versus thriller, but like you got stuff like your creature features, like Alien, you got yeah sort of more sort of realistic slasher movies uh, you've got like uh, more psychological horror uh, cosmic horror occasionally yeah no I, I get it I just wasn't when you first said uh, di when you first said it like I was thinking like I, I didn't quite get what was being said, pretty much. Mm. Like, what was, uh... What what they were saying what, what was stagnant, or... I, I just didn't quite get any of it. 
Now, I'll be honest, horror in movies doesn't work for me as effectively as games. Because ah. of the, well, mainly because of the interactive feature. Ah, so you Like, it doesn't, it, it doesn't mean that I don't like, uh, horror movies, that, that I don't like horror movies, just like, if I'm, I don't really watch them for a scare. Ah, so you'll reverse Joseph Anderson, gotcha. Who, who? He's a video essayist, I think is the term. Uh, basically, cunts who cunts who like go on for hours and hours and hours. Oh no, I know, I know what those are. Yeah, yeah. I I love when like joke channels start doing video essays because just like wow, dude, I like it when you're being stupid and goofy, and now you're just being stupid so did, for hours. So he did a pretty controversial video where he talked about um how ho why horror doesn't work for him, and he basically said that because like oh because it's interactive and you have that like element of like and because you it's because it's interactive and. You know you're essentially immortal because there's always a respawn, which it just seems to be in the dark games when you don't, but that's the point. And that therefore movies, horror movies got him because there was no, there was that you no know, connection like that. It's like, he doesn't feel invincible because he knows the characters aren't, aren't invincible. And it's like, well... I know, I know, you know, and it was, it became like a big deal because the whole bunch of it was like, uh, complete lack. It was sort of very, um, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Authoritative, like he basically, uh, in the way he spoke, uh, tried to. So, uh, so like where I, where, where I just kind of said like, oh, it just doesn't really work for me, but I don't, I think they're fine, and I just like walked away, re like real quick. I'm just like, mm -hmm. so like where I, I just said that he's like, like no, no, this is this isn't just my opinion. This is the fact. Yeah, he portrayed it more as if he was stating a fact and opinion, and whether he not was or not. Uh. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, whether the fact is he meant it to be his uh, portrayed as a fact or his opinion, he didn't portray, he didn't, like, effectively portray it as such, it became, like, a huge deal. He didn't communicate it very well. Which, to be fair, I don't like him much, so I didn't super care, but I did become mildly amused at the whole controversy, it just, it got a bit silly. I mean, it sounds silly. I mean... I mean, most- I mean, all internet controversies are always silly, let's be fucking real. Well... Most are- like, 90% of them are silly, yes. Some of them are a little bit dodgy. Like Pro Jared. Yeah. Or do you worry, eh? Yeah. Sometimes it's not a joke. But we can still make jokes anyway. Yeah, the Pro Jared one is one of those ones where it's not a joke. Not Pro Jared. Well, Pro Jared, yeah, but uh, but the uh, G Warrior one. Uh, we never really. Like, I don't think we've ever directly addressed it. but uh, we, yeah, everyone no, probably we, knows that. No, this we point. did directly address it, and then I had a whole episode where I did nothing but make fun of it, and then that episode mysteriously got lost. I'm. Di I did not. <laughs> you keep saying it like that. But I seriously didn't believe it because I love that episode. Are you kidding me? I was mad. I was actively fucking angry when I lost that episode. So I, so he did address it, and I even, and I made some. Words. We we had a field day with it. I remember, we ha we went we had like a fucking field day. We went on for like, like thirty minutes, just talking about uh, the, the Juario stuff. Because I think at that point we were like, it's been long enough. Yeah. Oh. Um, well, also, that it was literally in the wake of the revelation. It's like, oh. Well, suddenly it's not a case of a, ma of a man who's taught of a man tortured by things we didn't understand. I know it was a little. It was a little bit after that because we. Yeah. We we we, di we didn't touch yeah. it right away. And then, and then eventually, I just got bored of that. No subjects. Yeah, eventually, ev eventually, eventually, like in one of the Yakuza recordings, you went ballistic, and unfortunately, it did get lost. But like I said, that was like one of the funniest recordings, and it died and I'm so fucking mad about it because the one that we ended up having wasn't nearly as That's good. Because most of the episode was like all of our other episodes of lo where we have like lost episodes where we're just lamenting and saying man that was a really good episode too bad you don't get to hear it. I mean yeah but still it just sucked because it was a really funny one. There are times where the lost episode just didn't really wasn't really all that great. Okay yeah the second attempt to Oh, hold on, you're, you're dying. Hello? Hello? Are you okay now? Okay, you're, you're, you're good again. Uh, the second attempt at recording that one episode was... Oh god, you're dying again. Alright, I'm changing server. 
All right. Hopefully that's better. Uh, we'll find out, I guess. We'll find out as time goes on, I guess. But we'll see. But yes. So anyway, what were you saying? I was saying that um, the second attempt at recording that one episode was pretty abysmal, but so was the third at that point. We've given up by the third. I mean, it was worse because that was the E3 episode. Yeah. And we wanted to talk about all those hot new games that we didn't really care about. Yeah, there wasn't really a whole lot that we cared about that year, if I recall. No. I mean... Unless you care about Tom Clancy. No. No, I don't. I mean, I think we, we even did talk about this where I was talking about like how, like, honestly, I'm usually more excited by, like, indie titles and and shit than I am, like, the big ones. Mm. Not always the case, but it tends to be what happens with me. On the bright side, we can at least take pride in the fact that Battle Royale is mostly dead now. They add, well, you know what's funny? They apparently added uh, Titanfall mechs to uh, to the damn game, uh, Fortnite. Did they? Yeah. Oh, right, they did have like a mecha fighting a kaiju thing. Someone was telling me yeah, about Yeah, they just added Someone that. Someone was telling me about that, and it's like, huh, that sounds like it. That sounds like most things in Fortnite, that it's a, it's a neat idea, but it's presented horribly. I just don't like the art style of Fortnite. Fair. I don't like the gameplay. The art style is okay for me. I don't really... It's like that kind of thing where I don't really... Oh my god, flying this thing is a pain in the ass. Uh, I don't really care for it. Okay, there we go, finally. But yeah, I, I don't really... It's I'm indifferent to it, to be honest. Uh, For, Fortnite's art style, yeah. and then Fortnite itself, I don't really care about because it's a Battle Royale game, and I don't really like Battle Royale games. I, I played it with a... Uh, well, I, I say I played it. Uh, friends dragged me into playing it for a bit before I eventually... Uh, before I was like, you know what? The fact that Stockholm Syndrome hasn't even taken in yet means I really just don't like this game. Like, eventually after a point you play things, you're like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, maybe it will kind of grow on me still. No, I know what you're talking about. Like, a lot of times, like, when you first buy a game, when you buy a game, and you're at that point, when it, and it's not that great, or you're just not going to play it as much, and it's that first part where you're just like, no, no, this is fine, this is fine, I, I didn't, I didn't waste my money. It's fine, it's fine, it's not fine. But yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, it was an experience, like, I, I played it because friends are playing, were playing it, and I think they still play it, but eventually I just had to duck out, it's like, yeah, no, I'll play other shit with you, but I won't play this. I give up. But I won't play that. I mean, I try, I kind of find the comparison to Meatloaf rather insulting, frankly. Too late. That's just me. I can't believe you compare someone to Meatloaf. Too late. Even Meatloaf doesn't want to be compared to Meatloaf. Oh no. Oh no, what have I done? What have you done? I mean, okay, okay, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay for two seconds. Um. Fucking. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know what else to fucking say. <laughs> Ah, shit. Here we go. Okay, it's dead. Good. But, uh... Ah, fuck, what was I gonna... Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, we're gonna have to do it this way. Well... Oh, wait, no, because it's just gonna respawn. That doesn't matter! Fuck. Oh, wait, it didn't respawn. Oh, oh okay, Kirby. We're gonna break our own rules. F uh, sure, I'm okay with it this time. This time. There are no rules. The, the only rule of Dreamland is you fight or die. It's kill or be killed. Yeah. It's kill Kirby or be eaten by Kirby. Oh fuck! Either, I can't believe I've done either, this. D but, uh, either die as die inside Kirby, or you live long enough to see yourself become DDD's minion and be thrown by DVD at high velocity at Kirby. Mm-hmm. Or, or worse. All right. Take part in this big gay dance. 
Speaking of useless things, I like how Rob's in this game. Okay, he's gonna be in the next level, but we're not playing that today because we're at the hour point. Mm. And we'll see you next time. Hopefully with Sabo, assuming, assuming he's not still dead. He might be dead. Press F. Mm. I'll press Q. Does that count? Sure. Okay. The Q stands for Quant. <laughs>